Welcome to the party. I'm Sam Ekstrom of Locked On Sports Minnesota. Today on the show, I tell you why you cannot convince me Sam Darnold is good, but also why I don't care. Hey, this is Arif Hassan with the Wide Lev Substack. Over under Luke Inman questions towards Ron Johnson, 1.5. <laughs> Smash the over. Luke Inman on Twitter, at Luke underscore Spinman. This just in from Adam Schefter. Locked on sports has let Sam's fireplace walk in free agency for a future fifth round compensatory pick. And I'm Luke Braun of Locked on Vikings, and the only tampering I know about is what I did to Arif's car. Locked on sports Minnesota podcast. It's endless Minnesota Vikings talk with the diverse voices of your local experts. It's time for the Minnesota football party. It's that, was, that was a good. Can't wait to hear about the vandalism alluded to by Luke Braun, but this is the Minnesota vandalism. football party oh, on generous. Locked on Sports Minnesota. <laughs> Thanks for watching us live right now on the YouTube channel. Please subscribe. Thank you for getting us over the 7,000 subscriber plateau. We're on the way to eight. We're not going to be stopped. Please hammer that subscribe button and find us on the Locked on Vikings audio feed. Luke Braun hosting Locked on Vikings there. You can also hear us on the SiriusXM app. You can watch us on Amazon Fire and Roku. We're on the 24-7 live stream. Plenty of ways to watch and listen to this program. We're here every Monday, every Thursday, talking Vikes on Locked on Sports Minnesota. And we are presented today by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase since we spoke on Monday where we did a very stimulating live show. We talked about the Grenard acquisition in real time. Since then, Van Ginkle, Cashman, Jones, re-signings, Kirk to Atlanta officially, Sam Darnold. We get to all of that today and we get a visit from Ron Johnson to weigh in as well. Uh, let's just, in 30 seconds or less, let's just get out of the way what Luke Braun did to a Reef's car. Luke Braun, take it away. He'll find out. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't right. know yet. Okay. Well, I would love to have a car, so this is <laughs> exciting news for a lot of us. The well, car is being yeah. towed. <laughs> <laughs> With the owner that? of the Chevy Impala. Oh, God, I would kill for a Chevy Impala. Oh, because it's a car. I don't have one. Well, go up there, man. They just called your name. Go up there. <laughs> Claim it. On uh, on Monday, we spoke with pretty good certainty that Kirk was gone, and indeed he is. Kirk Cousins is an Atlanta Falcon. I think we can all agree in this panel, certainly some viewers are heartbroken and wish the Vikings would have paid the price. I would have never paid that price in a million years. I am totally never? okay. And, and in fact, I think seeing the terms... I think should put a lot of people at ease. I don't think there was a real decision to be made here. Does anyone disagree with me? Uh, I, I think I the agree. price was normal. <laughs> yeah. The guarantee structure. Yeah. Like the, the fact that they're pretty committed to three years, like they can technically get out in the third year, but like probably won't. I'm good on, on three. I mean, they're, they're guaranteeing him money at the age of 38. Uh, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. That's the issue. I think the price is fine. I think that, the percentage of the cap that he takes up is only slightly more than the percentage of the cap he took up when he signed an extension with the Vikings in 2022. The quarterback market has generally expanded as a percentage of the cap as well. So you can't always compare like for like going back. Um, just quarterbacks just take up more. In fact, elite quarterbacks take up 25%. He's taking about 17% of the cap. Um, that's pretty normal for a quarterback of his caliber. Um, I would argue that he increased his price with the quality of play that he's demonstrated over the past two years. I would argue that he decreased his price because of injury, uh, and those have kind of equaled out. The issue for me is entirely in guarantee structure. $45 million sounds like a lot of money, and three years ago, it was. But cap Two years ago, was, it was so big that it was like an untenable cap hit. And they were like, how are they going to get out of this? Yeah, how are they going to get out it of this? It was 2022 yeah. we had that conversation. Yeah, and they just extended him instead. Uh, and... And yeah, like it's just that's the reality right now is that that's a pretty normal ish price. Like that's essentially what Derek Carr signed for, which is like not a crazy amount of money. So the price is fine. The guarantee structure for an older quarterback, an injured quarterback, that's a concern, right? But if the Vikings were offered $45 million 
uh, from the Kirk Cousins camp, and they only had to guarantee two years, I'd say that would be a good deal for a bridge quarterback. Plus, again, their cap liabilities would have been a little bit different uh, given the nature of like the voids coming in. So it would have been a little bit easier to absorb, relatively speaking. Yeah, and the Vikings have been trying to move on since mm-hmm. before Rick Spielman got fired. They they were calling yeah, Kirk Cousins in 2021 and being like, hey, we might draft a quarterback. Mm-hmm. So when he said on the podium in Atlanta, like, hey, you know, things were kind of looking like trending toward being year to year. And in Atlanta, that wasn't the case. Like, that is the key difference that the Vikings were mm-hmm. saying, all right, yeah, we'll maybe use you as a bridge. But really, we're trying to move on to a rookie where the Falcons are going, no, no, no. Here's you're our guy. And this is a window. We now believe we're in a window with Drake London and Kyle Pitts and you and B. John Robinson. And like this offense, we now we now expect to contend. That's. The a really the, the fascinating sell of determination Cousins. by them, by the way, just a just a curious well, judgment. You know, that they glass made houses. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess we can't judge, but like that's 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 the sell, right? That's what they're going to be telling their fans. That's what the Vikings told Vikings fans for six years. I, I got to play this graphic on Kirk, and I'll, I'll explain why in a moment. It's time to tell you who spilled their proverbial drink on the sofa. Get ready for this week's party foul. Within 10 minutes of being the Falcons quarterback, he has put oh, them under yes. investigation yeah. for camping. <laughs> so good. I met, I met with the trainer. I mean, I called the trainer. I mean, oh. Uh, I mean, I oh. also talked to the PR and HR and trainers and you name it. Yeah. I've met the janitors. I've talked to everybody in the organization. Kyle Pitts and I have argued about the number eight. Basically, uh, they tampered the heck out of this situation. For those so, so, unfamiliar with the rules, teams are not allowed to contact players during the legal tampering period. They are allowed to contact a player's agent unless that player is representing themselves, which Kirk obviously is not. Uh, and so when Kirk says he talked to the athletic trainer for Atlanta, quote, yesterday during the legal tampering period before the signing period that violates league rules and multiple teams have lost draft picks as a result of these kinds of violations. That includes the 49ers, I believe, and at least one other team. But this has happened. And good work, Kirk Cousins. You haven't even played a snap for the Falcons and you've started fumbling. <laughs> wow. Uh, the, the Falcons might get lucky here because the louder example of this is Saquon Barkley with the Giants and the Eagles. A- apparently, there was a ah, similar situation. But James Franklin is the one who said it, not Saquon Barkley, right? Okay, so actually- that. Yeah, so that like the league, like they yeah, just this argue, is oh, no, the that's hearsay, mouth here. or they misinterpreted right. or whatever, right? This is right. Well, saying I talked to a team employee. Definitely <laughs> more irrefutable. However, which one will be the bigger story in the media cycle is probably the one that gets the bigger punishment because that's how this works. So maybe the, the Falcons will luck out if if you're the if you're a Falcons fan, start tweeting a lot about Saquon Barkley. Really make a stink. Okay, should we expect right now, or should we lower the bar? Should we expect anything, any kickback, anything back from this at all down the road? I think in the past they've done like third round pick swaps or something like that, so maybe. But yeah, so like, so they enter into like an arbitration with the NFL where they negotiate the penalty, and so in the past that penalty that's been negotiated is a third round pick swap. Now the Vikings don't have a third round pick, so it'd be kind of difficult for that swap to occur, but it'd probably be an equal amount in terms of points. Yeah. Okay, so this is down the road. This is not happening in this draft. We won't see any kickback or any changes in this draft, you wouldn't think. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, potentially. Uh, Just real quick, Sam, I know you want to move on, but a a quick update on the comp picks. Can somebody give me a quick update on the comp picks? Right now, if if Osborne and Wanham and, and, you know, Reisner walk, maybe we're in line for two third-round comp picks next year. Is that right? Uh, More or less depends on how much they sign for, as long as they sign for more than, I think it's like 2.75 mil. they are currently, as it stands right now, they have gained four and lost four compensatory free agents, which means they would get nothing. It all cancels out and they're all even. Mm-hmm. If it is uneven and they lose more than they get, then the ones that like survive would be the third round picks as far as I understand. So so the comp pick, the value is based off how much money these players signed for. Is it apples to apples as far as, hey, you lost a guy, you signed a guy that cancels each other out, no matter the position or the price? 
Yeah, they like cancel out as yeah. close as they can. Okay. And that's the part where like the formula gets kind of hard to predict. And the only person who's good at it is Nick Corti. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And there's like weird rules involving uh, like older veterans. Like there's a cap on uh, like 32 year olds or something like that, which like the teams sometimes are surprised by these. Right. Like the Steelers um, like lost a compensatory free agent that was like 33 or something like that a couple of years ago. And uh, only got a fifth round compensatory pick for it. They're like, what the heck, man? This guy signed for like millions and millions of dollars. Right. And it turns out there's like an age component. To it. So like we're finding out new stuff about the formula all the time. But yeah, it's 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 like it's player for player. They like stack up the players right mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. by the round compensation that they would get. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then player for player, they knock them out, and the players that are left um determine the compensatory kind of value against all of the other compensatory i feel like i used to know the the formula and theory and everything else and then it's changed so much or maybe we found out more information over the years and now i just i just felt kind of lost so that's a good little quick uh update and refresher on that i just too. let people tell me at the end of free agency i don't even try to keep yeah. track that's probably um, the it's not it. like it's this yeah. draft either right um right. I, let, let's let's talk about sam darnold um i want to like him because he's got a great first name and you guys have told me that you that you preferred him. Like you guys said, Sam Darnold will be a great acquisition, and I want to believe you. But you you're going on a pretty flimsy six game sample size in 2022, where he was certainly league average. But if you look at the body of work, man, I don't know. I don't know how I can really talk myself into this. Um, and I'm not concerned because they're getting a rookie, so I don't care. It's a one year deal, but. Out of 36 quarterbacks with over 1,000 pass attempts from 2018 to 2022, Sam Darnold last in adjusted mm -hmm. net yards per attempt. Only one under six. Isolated to Carolina. Okay. Uh, the Jets were a bad situation. How about his Carolina years? 33rd out of 34 ahead mm -hmm. of the Jets' Zach Wilson. Um, bottom six in deep oh. passing percentage every like year. Take off Luke. Except a Luke Braun. Drop <laughs> live show, folks. Live show. Yeah, I mean, live show. Never know. That's doesn't like those numbers, show. man. We'll do it live. Yeah. We'll do it live. Um, I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> what is it to, to play us out? What does that mean? <laughs> play us out. What does that mean? Um, so, Sam Darnold, well, bottom yeah. six in deep passing percentage every year except 2022, where guess what? Not he was bad. first. He was first in the six game sample. Horrible mm -hmm. against pressure, except for 2022. So really, you're mm -hmm. banking on 2022 six games being the reality and not the anomaly. Well, who, who on this correct. show said they wanted Sam Darnold? I, I remember me Arif and Arif was for sure opponent. Arif was wanted opponent. Jacoby Brissett. In, I know we... Well, we yeah, yeah. Up. Primarily, I wanted Jacoby Brissett. He signed for, uh, what, one year, eight million with the Patriots, which... Yeah, less. Would have would have liked that. Um, interesting that Luke Braun has just gone for this part of the discussion. So <laughs> the reason those don't bother me uh, or one, obviously, the level of expectation that you have for Sam Darnold, it's not, you know, to be in every every game starter or anything like that. It's to be a bridge quarterback in the same way that Nick Foles was with the Bears, that Matt Castle was with the Vikings back in 2014. We're familiar with the concept, right? Um, Sam Darnold looked pretty good uh, in his 50 snaps or so last year. He looked pretty good in those six games the year before. And the reason I think those provide us with a bit more signal is, one, take a look at how quarterbacks did besides Sam Darnold, escaping Matt Rule. Baker Mayfield just signed like a 40-whatever-million-dollar contract, right? Like mm -hmm. he had a pretty good year in Tampa Bay, and he also did really well in Los Angeles after leaving Matt Rule, right? So I think it's two situations that you have to account for. Now, at that point, you're like, hey, man, we're starting to make excuses for this guy. If he was really good, he'd be able to overcome the situation. And I agree. We're not asking him to be a franchise quarterback. We're asking him to be all right. We're asking him to be the Nick Foles of the Bears, right? Like, it's fine. And I think that when you take a look at the skill set that he demonstrated uh, in Carolina in the San Francisco, he wasn't always throwing on time. That was kind of my biggest concern. But he was accurate. He had a good arm. He actually did pretty well under pressure. Uh, he was able to distribute the ball to playmakers. He had a good understanding of the shape of the defense. He executed the offense. And I think that's what you want for a guy who's only getting paid Ten million dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that it, you just take a look at the statistics, and you take a look at what he's put on tape. They both align uh, on a quarterback that is playing a lot better in these two new situations, right? One under Steve Wilkes, 
one under Kyle Shanahan that really allowed him to like play football in like a real environment. Cause you remember the stories about Matt rule. Teddy Bridgewater told a story about that, which by the way, I believe his worst years were also in Carolina. Um, they didn't, was that Matt rule? They didn't do two minute drills in practice. Like there was like a crazy, like, what are you doing? Like that guy did not know how was to coach. Was that Matt that rule though? Was that Matt That's rule? I don't know. Yeah, it was, was a while ago, actually. That might not have been rule, but it was, it was brutal. Like, I don't know. It's, I feel like situation matters a lot for quarterbacks at this tier. Yes. Right. Like if, if we're talking, like if, if we're like, comparing someone to Patrick Mahomes, right? These are reasonable arguments of Justin Herbert as putting together a bunch of, uh, you know, up and down years, which he is, right? That's a worthwhile discussion because Justin Herbert is being put into this top six, whatever category of quarterbacks. Sam Darnold is a bridge quarterback. We're asking him to potentially be the 20th best quarterback at best, right? And hopefully, you know, at some point a rookie's going to take over. And I think the Vikings got that for $10 million, which is why I think this is a good deal. So that's my argument. Yeah, no, I thought you hit on a lot of good stuff there. Everybody right away was trying to tell me, hey, this is another Baker Mayfield situation. Baker Mayfield won the rookie of the year. Baker Mayfield played good for stretches. Now, like you you pointed out, Arif, there's still a lot of fun stuff to work with here. There's still a lot of tools that intrigue you. I mean, the guy went, what, third overall in the draft for a reason. So I think uh, the, the best thing you said was this is where we find out how important and valuable like a quarterback's ecosystem is, if you, if, if you will. Uh, I mean, like you said, that stuff matters a lot for quarterbacks of this tier. And and now he's got a real quarterback coach who knows what he's doing. Uh, a guy who knows how to game plan and scheme up and, and more importantly, just coach you on the fundamentals back up because he's done it. He's played in the league. And on top of that, yeah, obviously the best supporting cast Sam Darnold's ever had to work with by far as well. So j just in general, a really well, well-ran organization compared to what he had with Carolina and back at, with New York and Adam Gase and that whole fiasco. But I'm pumping the brakes on this whole Baker Mayfield comparison personally for now. Not to say it was Matt I Rule, by the way, with Teddy. I just was it really with the no two yeah. minute. Thank you, yeah. Ian. Thank you, Ian, for the comment. Yeah, good call there. Uh, um, not to no, say I'd be right. surprised though if if Sam Darnold had his best season ever this year because of the surroundings. But but for me, yeah. He's the bridge, a bridge only, meant to be that stopgap, kind of plug in, hopefully be competitive for however long it takes, you know, to get that rookie up to speed and get acclimated with the NFL game. And I, I think you're right, uh, Arif, like 10 million. I mean, it seemed like a lot maybe right away for Sam Darnold, but honestly, the more you think about it, that that's so dirt cheap for a starting quarterback, first of all. And second, if that's the guy you wanted and you got in a little bidding war with another team, maybe it was Denver, I think was the rumor. The difference between six or seven million, right, for like Jacoby Brissett, eight in New England versus 10, which he ended up paying to get the quarterback you wanted to roll with as that bridge for this year. That's peanuts as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, let's get a Luke Braun take on Darnold. Welcome back, Luke Braun. Then we'll uh, we'll get in a word from our partners, and then we'll get to Ron Johnson. But Luke Braun, Sam Darnold, your thoughts? Uh, as a bridge, it's fine. Like I think the the main thing preventing Sam Darnold from being someone's like true long term starter is is long term consistency. It's that he can have some good games and then too many bad games, and so you can't like string a season of of that together and feel okay. Um. But you don't have to string a whole season. God forbid you don't have to string a whole season of Sam Darnold together. If he starts an entire season, something's gone very wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, either the rookie isn't ready for a whole year, which is a concern, or they like whiffed in the draft entirely, which is even worse. Uh, you you just need him for what? The first like six to eight games, however long it takes the rookie to get ready. And if you expect some ups and some downs, you really... You, you're you're probably okay with an up and down start before that that rookie comes in as long as you're still in shouting distance of the division standings by the time the rookie gets in and then you can hopefully make a, a CJ Stroud esque push uh you know late season push that is I guess the goal of a bridge quarterback that's all a bridge quarterback is here for and and in terms of the the, the ten million adjusted into this year's cap that's like what Matt Castle made when he was here doing the same thing for Teddy Bridgewater it's it's just it's what you pay for a bridge quarterback that you want to start some of the games but not all of the games quick poll of the room because they're gonna have a four quarterback room after they draft a rookie so who survives Jaron Hall or Nick Mullins on the roster. <sighs> Oh, put, put, a vote, put a vote out. I vote Hall. I think Hall oh, survives. I, I think Hall survives because the goal is to have a backup veteran, and that's what Sam Darnold 
will turn out to be. Yep. yep. But okay, I'm I, choosing I'm the not, you guys. I'm, I'm not confident in that. that no, be confident. Really it's a, be confident. It's fine. I'm choosing. <laughs> I'm choosing to believe you guys over myself. So. Mullins might be worth a seventh, and Hall would not be. That's my logic. Also, oh, that's a good. That's that. That that would be cool. Maybe I don't know. Mullins was available for free for the Vikings, right? So like, what it is was he like done a six seven improve? swap like that kind oh, of thing? Okay. okay. Just like wondering like what he did to improve his stock, but yeah, whatever, it's fine. Um, or- third and twenty. <laughs> 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 Let's ask Ron Johnson about uh, Harrison Smith's return and the Daniil Hunter Jonathan Grenard swap next on the Minnesota Football Party. It's brought to you today by Game Time. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. You don't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event, whether that's sports, music, comedy. Or theater. I used game time to get into a recent Timberwolves game. It was super easy. I got the all in price. I got the view from my seat and I got a great deal. And uh, I used the promo code locked on for $20 off. Yes, with game time, you can get tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts because, of course, you want to be fashionably late. Uh, those last minute seats are great. And with the zone deals, you pick the section, game time picks the seats, and you get big time savings for that. So download the game time app, create an account. Use code locked on for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code locked on, L O C K E D O N for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And we welcome in Ron Johnson to the festivities. He's the host of the Ron Johnson show on Tuesdays. He is on X at three Ron Johnson. Some people call it Twitter. Ron, the big news of today, Harrison Smith is returning to the Vikings for a 13th season. I saw $9 million as the compensation. It's pretty fair. Uh, and he gets to play under Brian Flores for another year. It feels like this defense is coming together, Ron. They got they got the edge rushers now. Uh, you add Blake Cashman. You get Smith back. Uh, this is not a defense in rebuild mode any longer. They are strengthening. Live show, live show. We don't have you, Ron. He's Sean, just coming no. in to sit here silently and cool uh, he's just talking glasses. really quiet. Turn up I mean, the ball. Some really Turn cool it all the way glasses. up. Some really yeah. cool glasses. It's fairly intimidating, honestly. This is so the fantastic live show ex- podcasting. Live show experiment went great on Monday, and today <laughs> Luke <laughs> Ron crashes. <laughs> right. Ron Johnson's audio dies. Um, one, two. All right, now we have audio, but it's not through the microphone. This is really good. Meanwhile, the comments are threatening Luke Braun, so I actually really appreciate the live show experience. I think I yeah, think that's... the commenters enjoy how ragged this production is when they actually get to see behind the curtain. <laughs> Whatever you want, oh, to absolutely, tell you about, Sam. Absolutely. I mean, this is... <laughs> they get to see how messy the kitchen is right before yeah. that nice food comes out, right? Yeah, you're getting called out here, Luke, by what Antonio Brown calling you out? Who's this? Yeah, it looks like Antonio on? Brown. Yeah. Do, do we know about this? Rumor? Antonio, this is a personal issue. We'll talk about it off the air. Okay. <laughs> Handled that well. Handled that with class. Something we need to tell your fiance, Luke? Is that <laughs> is that Ron? We'll give you like one minute uh, no, to, to work on it, then we'll bring you back in and, and do another test. Um let's uh let's get into Harrison Smith back. I tended to think he was retiring. Um, so this is a pleasant surprise, and it sounds like the Vikings restructured the deal. They saved some money. How much cap do they say? If it's nine million, like I saw, how much cap are they saving? Like seven, eight? Yeah, it was either like nine? six so, or yeah. nine, right? What, six or what does a nine million dollar contract mean? Like that's the detail I'm waiting for. Does that mean that he will be making nine million dollars? And does that include like the prorated bonus from previous mm-hmm. restru- from the the previous sign, like the original deal? then that would be a cap hit of like 12 mil and you save like seven or close to seven. Uh, or does that mean the entire cap hit of the deal is $9 million, which I believe would be about as much restructuring as he could do uh, or as much pay cutting as, as he could take, like as much of a pay cut as he could take. Uh, and then that would reduce the cap hit by $10 million. So it's somewhere between six and 10, but it depends on like what Pretty the wording actually range is. there. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah huge um, range. Either way, yeah. good news. But yeah, one definitely you'd prefer a little bit more than the other for sure. I, I don't sense that there's been significant decline with Harrison Smith. I mean, he was asked to do the perfect role for him last year. Number two in safety pass rushes behind Josh Metellus, tied for fifth in pressures, didn't have an interception. That's fine. He wasn't playing center field like he was with Ed Donatel. I, I think he's the same guy as he was the year before and the year before that. I don't know if he's the 2017 version of himself, but uh, I love him on the team. I, I think that he's still an asset. Do you guys have any any inkling that he has declined or will decline? Uh, I mean, in in a sense, I believe he's declined, right? I don't like when we say an athlete has declined, we often usually mean like fairly catastrophically, which is not the case here. Harrison Smith at one point had a very good argument for being the best safety in the NFL. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's that, right? So in that sense, he's declined. But I think he's still a very valuable player to have just for his on-field capability. And then obviously you add in, you know, his, his the additions in the locker room, um, you know, what he does, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of making sure guys are aligned and stuff like that. That's all yeah, really that's which There's well. like no no veteran captains left because Hicks is gone. Yes. Yep. Is gone. Yeah, that's right. huge. Yeah. That's right. huge. And, so, and yeah. you know, what else can you say? Hey, I think he just had a lot of fun playing in this Flores scheme. It, it enjoyed yeah. playing football again after Donatel. I mean, man, you, you couldn't have two polar opposite experiences, I think, if you're Harrison Smith um, from what he got in 2022 versus last year. I think you go back to even the beginning of last year, training camp preseason, you listen to some of those interviews. Those guys, those defensive guys, man, they were geeking out about this scheme, man. You, you could just kind of tell he loves some of the creativity Flores was using. It almost kind of seemed like, it was something new for him again, which after what, 10, 11 years, uh, that was probably a nice kind of breath of fresh air for him too. And, and yeah, I mean, a reef's right. Like, yeah, maybe not the number one safety in the league anymore. Uh, maybe a little long in the tooth for sure. Doesn't have that same range perhaps, you know, back in his prime when he'd pick off Aaron Rodgers two, three times every year in, in deep center field, but still a great box safety, man. He's still going to give you a ton of experience as that blitzing safety. Probably the number one thing he brings to, to the table. I think the most important thing, like Arif said, it's the coach on the field, man. Every person that gets asked about Harrison Smith, whether it's a player or a coach, it's like the first thing they bring up. He is a coach on the field. Sometimes players are like, dude, what is he doing? I don't even know what he's doing. And then the play happens. You're like, oh, the guy knew the play before it even happened. So uh, I think that was something that if you're Brian Flores, you're probably not going to pass that opportunity down if this guy's willing to come back for sure. So uh, as far as like, you know, how it looks on the field again, I mean, fully prepared now for, you know, the same three safety looks again. Do we know the percentage? Were, were they like the number one three safety package defense in the league last year? I would assume they got to be top two if, or three. If you think of Metellus as a safety where he was kind of in that linebacker Let's role just, a lot of those argument, times. Yeah. Or the yeah. Nick, he meets but, with the safeties in the safety room. He's a safety. Right? Yeah. He's a safety. Yeah. And, and but, they were, you know, that three safety package though, number one in the NFL. I, I got to guess they were top two or three. Yeah. I can but double check later, right. but the last time I looked, I believe they were number one. Luke, do you have different numbers? Let's let No, Ron I was going to say, Sam, in. Uh, before we get to Ron, play the sound real quick. Oh, we got some, uh, some breaking news. Yep. Tom Pelissero the NFL is looking into potential tampering by the Eagles and Falcons prior to the start of free agency regarding Saquon Barkley and Kirk Cousins. There we go. There we go. I actually flashed that about one minute ago. Um, yeah, yeah, we're, again, we're, we're talking about it. We appreciate that. Um, Ron Johnson, Harrison Smith is back. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it, it made sense. Like, where, where else are you going to go at this point in your career? You're already contemplating retirement uh, system. You know, why move your family out? His wife's pregnant, you know, for the, with their second child. So there's a lot going on there that you just don't want to probably uproot your family at this point in your career. Uh, when you know you're kind of towards the end, $9 million is a lot of money to play for one season. So I think a lot of players like Chad Greenway, I talked to him towards the end of his career, um, and he was talking about that too. Like, hey, I had a number that I would be willing to play my one more season or two more seasons, and I had a reason for it. You know, Chad Greenway's reason was he wanted to live on Lake Minnetonka, and he's like, look, this one year will buy the house that I want on Lake Minnetonka without me having to go into my money. And so, you know, for Harrison Smith, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of, like, he's made a lot of money, but – what's better than money you already have is new money. And so his thought is, look, I, I can still do it. I'm going to do it. A um, couple points to point out, though. One, players and coaches, I think, 
it, it's synonymous, but at the same time, like Eric Kendricks, you know, how he talked about like, oh, it's such a different system, you know, with Kevin O'Connell and since Zimbin's gone and then he follows them. So I, I sometimes now I want to take a, with a grain of salt with some of these players say, because in the moment it feels like that until you get to another place and you're like, oh, maybe it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. So, you know, I, I think we do owe Zim a little bit of an apology for a player that kind of spoke up about fear base and all this other stuff. And then you go follow that fear. So clearly it's not truly fear. It's just I just wanted to say this to make Kevin O'Connell feel good because he was entering the door and it's a new personality. Uh, that was first. Second, for Harrison Smith, too, like I, I think part of it is that he's at his career where w- what's what's going to get him to Canton? What's going to like you don't want to change what people think about you by going somewhere else and not really having a good season. I think with the Vikings, no matter what he does, people are going to still love him. They're going to still appreciate him. Um, you know, you think about some players, which it didn't affect their career, but it definitely was like, why, why'd he go there? Like Ed Reed going to the Jets. You know, it's kind of like, what, what, are you, what are you doing? Like, that doesn't even look right. Uh, and then going to the Bills. Like, what are you chasing? And so for, for Harrison Smith, he knows what he's chasing, which he just wants to be here. He's going to put his name higher up into the Vikings uh echelon he's gonna be a purple ring of honor guy and uh you know who not a lot of players can say i played for the same team my entire career um and i think he wants to be one of them so you know i think it's a cool moment that he's back from a leadership standpoint i think he's helping josh Metellus and cam bynum become leaders on this team and, and i think that's the other part of it they already have a system that they know works for those three you bring in the linebackers to fit to help out uh they have to get corners though as far as not rebuilding, true, but you got to get corners. You got to get some corners that you know you can trust to cover, and I think that's the next step. But but what better way to show my defense is solid and to lock up the back end, and, and the Vikings made sure to do that. Uh, Ron, these high-end elite wideouts, they're making crazy money nowadays, talking 30, 35 mil, maybe even more for J.J. when it's all said and done. So uh, I look at this draft class, knowing this draft class is just loaded, stacked to the gills with wideouts, all sorts of different talents. If you're a GM building a team, building a roster, would you value that position in the draft even more so now, knowing the difference between a rookie contract for four or five years versus what you have to pay this veteran in the open market is like exponentially more now? Like we talk about quarterbacks this way all the time and the advantage it is drafting one. Is it time we start looking at wide receivers the same way now? No. So a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. So to think about, any position in the NFL, if you already have it and you know it, it's more valuable than trying to go out and get two more that might not be worth it. So that's where that came from. A bird in a hand, a player in your hand is going to be worth more than those two over there because you don't really know what you're getting. I mean, we can look at deep receiver classes and then how many actually didn't pan out to be what we thought they should have been. I mean, you could you could look at the Jalen Rager class and say, man, that was one of the greatest ever. But Jalen Rager didn't uphold his end of the bargain. So you really don't know. Are you going to get a JJ or Jalen Rager? And that's that's what you have to figure out, too, in this draft. Like Michael Pittman Jr., like you can go on and on about some of the later round guys. And you can you can go down and look at LaVishka Chenault and, you know, some of those names. And there's there was a lot of guys in different drafts. And, and, and I mean, Henry Ruggs, like, come on. So you don't really know. And I think that's the key for this is you have to be very careful of what you decide. Uh, you can't overlook what's worth it. But for the Chiefs getting rid of Tyreek Hill, it worked out for them. And so that's what some teams are going to look at, too. Like, what's what's the effect? Is it is it the is it that we need that guy or could we get away with getting three more guys that are similar to kind of fill in or we just go a different direction with our offense and our quarterbacks? The guy that's where the Vikings, I think, are going to be in a lot of teams, too. Like you can get Marvin Harrison, Jr., and probably put him with any quarterback, and you're going to have success on that offense. Um, But I don't know if you get the same from some of the other receivers, and that's going to be the key in this. Is Marvin Harrison Jr. to me is the only like, yep, it's going to work. The other guys, you really don't know. You could get a Henry Ruggs or Jalen Rager. You're not guaranteed to get a Justin Jefferson or a Jamar Chase, and that's that's when you have to look at receivers and just kind of be honest. Like, you don't really know. It's a crapshoot, you know, but it can feel good to draft a guy in the first round and feel like you got your guy because the Eagles felt like they had their guy and they did. So did the Raiders and they didn't even without Henry Ruggs off the field issues on the field. He wasn't upholding to being taken over Jerry Judy. And then look at Jerry Judy. Like he didn't work out with him either. So you just don't know. 
So uh, I don't know how much you've been able to, you know, take a look at, at Sam Darnold or anything like that, but we've only ever seen an offense prepared by Kevin O'Connell for Kirk Cousins. Now, obviously, mm-hmm. last year we saw the offense change a little bit midseason, but that's way different than having a training camp. How do you think that offense will change with Sam Darnold in there instead of Kirk Cousins? It might be a rookie too, though. Like we we, we keep putting all this on yeah. Sam Darnold, and it might be a rookie. But if I'm going to go Sam Darnold, I just have to get my take on that. Um, Sam Darnold threw for 3,000 yards, and his head coach was Adam Gase. Adam Gase couldn't find his way out of a room with one door. And so that's that's what is surprising, like to throw for 3,000 yards with a coach who literally became world memes uh, and and was like the most confused coach I've ever seen. And to have a little bit of a now he did throw 19 touchdowns and 13 interceptions, so that's probably part of the problem. But Kevin O'Connell – is light years ahead of where Adam Gase was with Sam Darnold. It will be uh, as far as teaching him now. Like literally he has Josh McCown as well, who also uh, was a pretty good NFL quarterback, was a coach as well with quarterbacks for the last couple of years. So can also help him out in that aspect. So I think that's going to be the key for them right now as a group is getting Sam Darnold in the building, getting him understanding the offense and explaining to him the choice routes and what you can change and what you have the ability to do. And that's going to be the key. But, you know, for Sam Darnold, I don't think he's ever truly had, like early on when it mattered with the Jets, because the other stuff didn't really matter, truly had a staff that believed in him. Or when they did believe in him, they knew what they were doing. And so that's the problem. Like, you know, when they drafted him, they didn't know what they were doing. And then all of a sudden, when other teams are picking him up, well, now you're coming in to just be like the backup to Bryce Young, or you're coming to be this, or you're coming to be that. Like, it, it, and the Minnesota Vikings seem like maybe he could be the guy, but also they know like he was in he was in Carolina. So they're like, well, look, he's willing to kind of come in and be a quarterback leader for our rookie that we draft because he did that with Bryce Young. So that's another thing on his resume. Like he's actually dealt with having a number one draft pick in the broom and helping that kid along. So maybe that's part of it, too, from Josh McCown. Like, hey, man, I saw this guy do it firsthand. Let's do it. So. Ron, so the Vikings got two defensive free agents from the Texans in uh, Jonathan Grenard and Blake Cashman. From your experience, how big of a deal is that to have like a guy, like a buddy, like a guy that you know from before and you're going to this new environment, but you at least have this guy next to you? Or is is that just kind of wishful thinking? It's wishful thinking. Uh, I will say for Blake Cashman, it wasn't going to matter because he's from Minnesota. So he already has ties with IFA here, the marketing company, Blake Barrett's his agent, uh, who's been on the Ron Johnson show. We got to get Blake on again, by the way, Sam. Yeah. Um, And so when you think about Blake Cashman, he hung out all summer on Lake Minnetonka. Like I was out there with him on his boat. So he's been here with CJ Ham and been here with some of these Minnesota guys uh, working out and going over to uh, ETS with those guys. Like he knows the, uh, you know, the Adam Thielens and the IFA guys, because even when he's with the Gophers, he was working out with these guys here uh, on the field. And so some of the guys he worked out with are gone, but Harrison Smith's still here. Um, You know, Daniel Hunter is gone, but I know I've seen him work. You know, so he's worked out with some of these Minnesota guys already Um, bringing his teammate with them. I think that will help his teammate a little bit because he does know him. But today's NFL is different than yesterday's. Yesterday's NFL, we didn't have social media. So we weren't able to connect with guys around the league on social media and joke together and laugh at the same jokes and 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 be pissed off at the same Adam Schefter drama that, that pops up and all that. These guys created a bond online now. Now, Blake Cash is not an online presence and, and neither is Grenard from what I've seen. But I'm pretty sure these guys have connections with these guys at the Super Bowl and at these parties. Um, so it, it's a it, it's a little bit different nowadays when you're leaving the team, going to a new team, because you you actually have connected with some of these guys in various ways. But for Cashman, I will say he's going to help Grenard just from a Minnesota standpoint, because Blake has a boat here in Minnesota. Like his family's here. He already magically has places to go for holidays and stuff like that. Like he is going to help Grenard get a little bit more acclimated to Minnesota. Because he knows, like, for instance, where the Mall of America, you know, all that stuff. Blake, this is like Blake's coming home. Like, he's like, I come here in the offseason. I'm here. And so I think Grenard is going to get acclimated to Minnesota quicker uh, because he'll be able to hit up Blake and be like, hey, man, I'm flying in. I'm at the Omni. What what you got up? Hey, let's go lift or let's go over to ETS or let's go to the Mall of America. Uh, so that will help him get a little bit more comfortable. I will say that. Ron, I want you to stay here. I'm going to do a quick word from a partner. And then when we come back, I want us all the way in in rapid fire fashion now that we know the terms of grenard and daniel hunter the teams did an edge rusher swap houston minnesota i want to know who you would have preferred with the contracts they signed that's after a word here on the minnesota football party 
quick pause to tell you about Robin Hood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood is the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC, is a registered broker-dealer. All right, back on the Minnesota football party. Ron Johnson with us of the Ron Johnson Show. Find it on Tuesdays here in Lockdown Sports Minnesota. Uh, let's go around the horn. We'll start with Inman. Get everyone's take. Uh, Grenard, four years, 76, 42 million guaranteed. He's 26 years old. Daniil Hunter, two years, 49 million, most of it guaranteed in Houston as he uh, is about to turn 30. Who would you prefer? If I needed to pick between the two for like one game or one drive or one play, let's say, I'm probably still leaning Hunter. More polished, more complete player, top to bottom, between the run and the pass right now, today. But clearly there's so much more to it than that. And once you take into account where this team is at, clearly building for 2025 and beyond, like Quasi always reminds us, yeah, between the age, uh, the extra cap space you're saving, I do think this lines up more with what Quasi and the Vikings want to do as far as constructing their roster for this year and again more importantly beyond this year and Grenard still gives you that younger still very explosive edge rusher that is just now hitting his prime for a cheaper price which again just aligns with their blueprint of their timeline on clearly the way they want to build things here so bottom line they needed to get somebody in here and if they weren't going to sign Hunter and they didn't have the money to throw around you know that Hunter type of money this year and next year um I think Renard was a great consolation prize. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, I like both deals. Um, I don't think that either one of these deals is exorbitant or underpaying any of these pass rushers. So it's really just a question of kind of what you get out of being a little bit more efficient and saving a little bit more money signing Grenard, who I think is not as good a player as Hunter, but obviously his contract is, is substantially less. I think $7 million less on average, right? Um, well, that allows you to get somebody like a Andrew Van Ginkle, right? But I don't think the Vikings were under an enormous amount of cap pressure. I know a lot of people were talking about it like they were. They weren't. Uh, and so really the question is, can you fill out that defense with that extra cap space in ways that help you out more than the difference between Hunter and Grenard? And I don't know that the Vikings can do that. If they can, then I prefer the Grenard deal, right? But I don't know that they can. Um, I don't think the Grenard deal was a bad deal by the Vikings. But if you ask me which deal I prefer, I prefer the Hunter deal. But I just I I don't think the Vikings made a tremendously bad move or anything like that. This to me is not uh, a locus for enormous criticism. Hmm. Ron, well, you got two guys at the same weight. Uh, Daniel has two inches on him in height, forty yard dash. He ran a four or five. Grenard ran a four eight. Um, I, I think it comes down to just timing. The the Houston Texans, you know, probably didn't want to pay long term, and Daniel Hunter gives them that two year kind of to see because C.J. Stroud, what people have to remember, C.J. Stroud's contract is coming up in two years, probably. I'm guessing, unless his agent tries to pull a fast one and say, "Look, this dude's taking you guys to the playoffs twice now. You gotta you gotta get them in," because um, they're probably gonna make it next year as well, if not, you know, push for the Super Bowl. Um, but when you look at the overall. I, I still like Daniel Hunter because we know what we get with Daniel Hunter. I'm always a bird in the hand is, is better than two in the bush. You're two in the bush or, or, or Van Ginkle and, and Grenard. So we'll see what happens with those two. Uh, but if we're just looking at the two heads up deals, I, I do like a shorter, you know, Daniel's only two year deal. Uh, so when he's 32, you can decide to move on. Grenard, maybe he will merge into at 6'3. Maybe he's more built like an outside linebacker versus a DN that Daniel Hunter's built like because his, pro 
day weight was 252. He's easily 270 now when you look at how big and strong he's gotten since his rookie year. Um, they they have him listed as 265. I think he's he's definitely above that. He's probably 270, like I said, 270, 275. Um, whereas Renard, you're getting a true outside linebacker feel at a 6'3 height guy uh, at 263. So not as fast, not as quick, but maybe more. He has intercepted some passes, so maybe built better to drop back and fits this Brian Flores system a little bit better. Yeah, I, I don't think the amount is what drives this for me. I would prefer Hunter because I would prefer Hunter as a player. I think he's more of a disruptor. I think he's the kind of guy you have to game plan around. And I, I like Grenard a lot. Don't don't get me wrong at all. Um, I like Grenard. I like that deal. And I think that the catalyst is that Grenard's deal is a four-year deal that's has less guaranteed money than the two-year Daniel Hunter. It's a, just a different situation with where Hunter is at in his career and where Grenard is at in his career. So they've chosen something that's a little bit more long-term. Um, but yeah, if, if I'm asking which one I think makes the Vikings better, it's clearly Daniel Hunter to me. Uh, and I think like what the $5 million difference in average per year, I don't think that that can make up the difference. I think that Daniel Hunter has the higher floor. I'm also going to point out, though, that in his two years as a 3-4 outside linebacker, after converting, he was 31st both years in pass rush productivity. It's good. It's not elite. Like, that's a stat that, that we get enamored with, Fix with that. a lot of guys. And Daniel Fix Hunter, what, what are you saying, Reef? Bad stat? Yeah, it's a fixed stat. All well, right. all states are made up. Or... It's it's well this no. Get on the live just, show, guys. This disagree. Yeah. That that to me yeah. is reflective of a guy that is not impacting the game with a four man rush that often, with which Grenard does a lot. I think that's an insane Jesus. take. That's a crazy take. Obscene like, take. That was he Daniel was Hunter the had thing stretches, impacting offense. Daniel the Hunter had defense. stretches the last two years where he was invisible. There were stretches. Disagree disagree but that that's those, a you okay. problem hey yeah you're so invisible those those <laughs> free, <laughs> those okay so remember the first eight games of of 2022 when he was registering like one sack or whatever he was incredible in those games he was truly a remarkable player in those games and i'm still mad at ed donatel for not sticking up for him for not mm -hmm. saying hey he's playing really well right because when we asked we were like hey you know, what, what is, what is, what does Hunter need to do to get better? And by we, I mean someone else. Cause I didn't think he needed to get better. Um, Ed Donatel was like, Oh, you know, it's a three, four. He's going to have to learn how to play the system. He's, you know, learning. And it's like, dog, defend your guy. He's playing really well. He's not getting the pressure numbers, but he's winning against his man. That's all you can ask him to do. If they're rolling the pocket away from him, that's a good thing. That's his fault, but he doesn't get the statistic. Right. Mm -hmm. If they're double teaming him, that's a good thing. That's his fault. But he doesn't get the statistic. He was playing out of his mind. He was not invisible. He just didn't show up in PFF's pressure camp, which is fine. I like PFF, but there are always limitations to these kinds of things. Yeah, they're charting a different thing. Yeah. The impact that you have on an offense as a defensive end is you kind of have to take your eye off the ball for that one. So when you're looking at, you know, run stops and pressures and stuff like that, like when you're looking at the trenches, you you have to take your eye off of the like holistic result of the play because it's all, everything is part of a greater whole. And Daniel Hunter held the biggest part. No argument. I, uh, yeah. I hate squashing a good argument when I'm getting hammered, um, <laughs> but we have to be out by 49. So that's uh, that's right. the Minnesota football party for today. Ron, thank you. Ron Johnson show on Tuesday's roundtable tomorrow with Julia Daniels and Reggie Wilson. Irv um, Smith to the Chiefs, by the Irv way. Irv Smith to the Chiefs. Going to hang have the banner right, right now. now. Let's go. <laughs> we come in. Luke that Inman, postcast. Locked on Sports Minnesota. Reef Hassan, wide left. Luke Braun, locked on Vikings. Thanks for watching and listening. And uh, we'll we'll keep going live. We'll try to get on Monday. So talk to you then. Thanks to all who joined the show today.